Hi, I'm Daniel Cox, and I want to introduce you to the wonders of Micro Four Thirds cameras, specifically the Panasonic Lumix line. What impresses me so much about this category of camera is the fact that they're lighter, their lenses are smaller, they incorporate the newest technology, and they're much, much cheaper than the traditional DSLRs we've all been shooting in the last couple of decades. To achieve many of the benefits I just described, Panasonic Lumix engineers designed these cameras from the ground up, and in doing so, chose to utilize a smaller sensor, which is what cameras use to record still photos and video. Having a smaller sensor provides mostly advantages, but there are a couple of disadvantages, and it's the purpose of this video to show you how to work around some of those issues by following the rules of what I call the Micro Four Thirds Triad. So what is the Micro Four Thirds Triad? As the name suggests, it consists of three main components that I feel are necessary for giving these smaller cameras the ability to compete with the full-frame traditional DSLRs from Nikon, Canon, and now Sony. Follow these three rules of the Micro Four Thirds Triad and your smaller cameras can compete with what has been the world's best. So what are those rules? Number one, the use of the most up-to-date camera possible such as the Lumix G9, the Lumix GH5, or even the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Number two, combine those state-of-the-art cameras with the highest quality lenses you can get such as the ones here that consist of the new Leica 200mm f2.8, the new Leica 50-200mm, the Leica 12-60mm, and the Leica 12mm f1.4. Other lenses on the list include the Olympus 40-150-2.8, the 300 f4, both world-class optics. The only downside is the fact that Olympus lenses won't support the Lumix Dual IS or DFD functionality. Only the Lumix branded lenses support those two special features. There are other lenses as well, but these are good representations of some of the highest quality lenses you can get. And finally, number three, use the most technically advanced RAW conversion software you can find, and for me, that is currently DxO Photo Lab. So that's what I call the Micro Four Thirds Triad, which consists of the best cameras combined with the best lenses, and the images you create processed with the best software gives you the ability to compete with the much larger, more expensive camera systems we've all been shooting. With that, let's head to the field so I can show you how I'm using these cameras to produce the wildlife, nature, and travel photography similar to what I've been producing in the last 40 years. We'll be discussing the cameras as well as some of the lenses, and then eventually we're going to come back here to the studio to explain how the software finishes it all up and ties it all together. Let's get our gear. It's been raining a lot here this spring in Montana. We're going to grab our rain jacket. Going to get our favorite ha rain hat. Let's go see if we can get some pictures. So this morning we're looking for a little spot, maybe a creek, a little river, something we can do a landscape with. It's kind of a crappy morning. It's raining. Uh, just passed through some, went to the higher elevations and went through actually snow, which is really typical in Montana this time of year. We're going to take the G9 out and use it in some really kind of inclement weather. Again, this all refers to the first part of what I call the Micro Four Thirds Triad, and that is the most up-to-date and high-quality camera that you can get your hands on. In this particular situation today, that is the Panasonic Lumix G9. So I now have everything I need, filters for the waterfall that we're going to be shooting, some neutral density filters. I'm bringing the G9 with the 12 to 60 millimeter Leica lens and uh, a couple other lenses in here, a little more, the 8 to 18 as well. So we're going to pack this all up and take it into the field. So we're going into grizzly country and I'm going to bring my bear spray. This is the most effective tool you can have to protect yourself in case you run into a bear. I think I found the waterfall. Well, as I said, we found the waterfalls. They're here. 
Now we're going to be pulling out the Lumix G9 and the Leica 12 to 60 millimeter zoom. So for this situation, I want to use as slow a shutter speed as I possibly can, or at least within reason. We're probably going to go down to around one second. I'm using program mode because I can easily switch between shutter speed and aperture. It's like having shutter priority and aperture priority are all rolled into one. I'm going to dial it down, and at f22 I'm only getting an eighth of a second. So that's where neutral density filters come in. I've got a variable neutral density filter here which allows me to reduce the exposure by as many as eight stops. In this rainy weather, drops on the lens are a big deal. It can happen very easily, so you've got to keep your lens cleaning cloth with you. So now the neutral density filter has reduced my exposure down to 1.6 seconds, which will give me a nice, beautiful, silky water effect. Nice and sharp, but at four seconds, we're down at f22. I don't want to shoot there. I want to shoot around 5.6 or maybe f8. When you start shooting apertures, clear down at the bottom range of your lens, which is f22, you start running into issues with diffraction. So I want to move that back up to f8, f5.6, and then we'll adjust the neutral density filter to give us about a quarter of a second, maybe half of a second. So I'm now at f5.6, and with the neutral density filter, I get a quarter of a second. And that's your silky waterfall technique. One of the main reasons that I came out to do this today is because I wanted to test the cameras in really inclement weather. It's been raining all morning. The camera's now been out for probably 15, 20 minutes. The GH5 that I'm shooting this on is soaking wet, actually wetter than the G9 because it's been out longer. But both of these cameras I've been shooting without any plastic covers, without any protection whatsoever. And that's really helpful for people who do stuff in the outdoors. Because as Dean Conger from National Geographic, a gentleman that I saw when I was 21 years old, when he took a look at my portfolio, he looked at me and he said, Daniel, keep one thing in mind, the sun doesn't always shine. And I've kept that and taken that to heart ever since. It was a great piece of advice. It's especially important when you're working with wildlife and nature. It's been a good, if not soggy, morning of photography, but we've accomplished what I went, set out to do, which was test these cameras in really inclement conditions. Both the GH5 that I've sh been shooting the video with and the G9 have held up beautifully, very wet, no camera covers of any sort. As far as I can tell, they're working perfectly, lenses are working perfectly, lots of water on both cameras, but they seem to have come through it with no issues whatsoever. So, it was a test and I think it's come out really well and it shows that these cameras are really well sealed, durable, and give you the ability to work in all kinds of weather conditions. Making some coffee. It's turning into a beautiful day. The sun's coming out, drying out some of my camera gear. Some bread for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Hot cup of coffee. And it's going to be the finish up to a great morning. One of the main elements of what I've come to call the Micro Four Thirds Triad are really super high quality lenses. Tonight, or this evening actually, I'm sitting here photographing a very long distance of black bear that is just feeding on the edges of the forest. I'm shooting the Panasonic Lumix G9 with the 200mm 2.8 with, with the 2x teleconverter. It's quite late, it's about 8 o'clock in the evening, but because it's overcast, and it's later, we have very little light. And that's where this 2.8 uh, 
lens comes in handy. Now when we put the 2x teleconverter on it, it brings it down to 5.6, but still we're shooting an 800 millimeter 5.6 on this black bear. So that's one of the elements that we've talked about when I, when I speak of the Micro Four Thirds Triad. The best cameras, the best lenses, and the best software, and you can compete with the traditional DSLR full frame cameras. She's just quietly grazing, cubs are playing on a log. Just an evening out having dinner with the black bears. An absolutely glorious afternoon and evening with the mountain goats up here in the high country. Just slightly windy up here, but that's where bikers like to hang out. They like to hang out right up on top of the wildest, most remote places here in the Rocky Mountains. So we're gonna go see if we can't find them. Well, I'm back in the field this morning. Sun's coming up. Birds are up. I've seen a couple pikas, and uh, we'll see how we do.